Hey guys, so today I'm doing a follow-up video to um, a video we made a couple of months ago on how to make a large batch of body butters at home and possibly use that to start your own skincare business. Um, I had to run a different batch and I've organized it so it's a little production line in a kitchen type setting and I wanted to show you um, how I do that. So here we go. I wanted to show you a good way to streamline your production line to uh, make a batch of body butters in your home. So everything that you see here is the whole setup, all the, um, all the items you need to quickly go through your whip body butter making. Um, I should have started this earlier. These are melted cocoa and shea butter. They're completely melted on low heat over a double boiler. Uh, it took about half an hour. It doesn't take a long time to melt them. So I had all the butters in a bowl melting. These are oils. I have olive oil, avocado oil, and rose oil all together in these two jars. I already weighed them. They're waiting to be mixed in with the melted butters. Once they're all in, in one bowl, this bowl will go in the refrigerator to cool off. Once it's solid and it's cooled off, it will go in this bowl, probably in two different batches because this is an, a very big bowl. But um, I bought a clear bowl because I really like to see everything that happens while it's being whipped. Um, a super cool thing that I also found is this tool that has um, this flexible part here. Um, the reason this is super useful is that when it um, when it whips, it actually scrapes the sides and all the butter that's there, it's able to grab it. So you don't have to scrape it off manually as much as uh, if you use a different whip. Then I also have um, the silicone tools to further scrape things off the sides. Uh, just a suggestion is um, see how you can get something this flexible which sometimes it's, it's an obstacle in really being able to scrape down the sides. So then you have to find a tool like this. This is harder. Oops. So this, see how hard it is? So this is a lot easier to scrape down the sides. So when you're done with all that, then you can use this tool to uh, fill your jars. When you're done filling your jars, you close them up with the lid and the last step is you have your um, labels and you put them on the jars and you're done. So this is kind of a overview in sequence of your production line at home to make uh, whipped body butters. All right, y'all, this is how much it increases in volume in five minutes. You saw at the beginning, and this is um, how it looks like at the end. So it is super soft, but just so you know, uh, I know this question has come up before. Um, this will harden up within 24 hours. I wish it stayed this soft without any um, synthetic ingredients. It's just not possible. I have not figured out how to do it. Um, so yes, it's whipped like whipping cream, but after it settles on its own, it will get a little bit hard. But you know what? It has no synthetics, no chemicals, it's just pure butter. So it's gonna be a little harder, but you just take a little piece and you melt it between your fingers and then you apply it and everything is good. Last time I did a video, um, I scoop all of the body butter in the jars with a spatula. This time I'm gonna show you, it is actually faster if you put it in a large, like freezer size Ziploc bag and you want to um, fold this back like this. And once you have it folded back, then you uh, fill it up maybe two thirds of the way with the body butter. Don't, don't forget this step, otherwise, uh, the body butter is gonna end up on the sides and it's really going to annoy you. When you're done going through all of the jars uh, with your Ziploc bag and filling them in, they will not be totally full unless you've done a good job. So you want to get a towel, 
fold it up and then you want to go like this really quickly and see then it settles at the bottom then you can add a little more on top obviously if you have a very nice a standard pastry bag you'll be able to fill them up if you hold the jar uh, in your hand when you squeeze it in you'll be able to fill it up all the way in the first attempt otherwise you know you'll just finish it up like this and it's totally full all right so after everything is in jars and sealed now it's time for the labels i wanted to tell you there's a few different types of labels you can get so this one is flat and it has a little Little cut in the backing so you can peel them and then you stick them on to the jars you can order um, rolls like these you know they're like sticker rolls or also you could get um, sheets of labels that you can either print at home with your printer if you have a high quality printer see these are labels that could go on a jar um, here's a different shape. So these are sheet. The only problem is when you print these at home, if um, you're not gonna get a laminate coating and it's really not advisable to use for jars that have butters or creams because um, it's not waterproof. I've done it, made the mistake. So I've been ordering them from, um, these are from a local printer, um, digital printing, these, um, they are from an online printer. So you just have to look up, um, you know, low run labels or low run, low run um, stickers and uh, you'll find them. Otherwise, see if you can go to a local printer uh, that will help you.